I got very lucky this weekend. Um, I got gifted some hides from family members. Um, it's, it's a lovely gift to be gifted hides when you want hides, but um, I've heard from a lot of tanners that often when you're gifted hides, you're gifted more than you can, can handle. Um, and hides are something that can sit for a little bit, but it's best to flush them right away and, and then they can sit for a bit, especially here where we live um, because it's cold. Um, so thankfully, because it's not warm, I don't have to process hides instantly, but I do need to flesh them. Um, it's best to flesh within 24 hours, but all the hides that I got are frozen. So I'm gonna do one at a time. We have some really mild temps right now. Like I think it's like minus five out. So, and it's only supposed to be like minus five or minus six um, Celsius tomorrow. So I'm hoping today and tomorrow I'll be able to flesh these hides and then the temperature here will drop by Wednesday to like minus 22 ish. Um, I'm hoping to experiment with some frost scraping, um, but if I'm not able to, I just got to get these hides fleshed and then they can get stored till weather starts warming up and then I can start processing them and getting them ready for um, smoke tanning. Um, so, da -da -da -da, I got, um, I got um, one cow hide and two caribou. So as much as I wish they had filled their caribou tags, um, <laughs> with all the work that I have to do right now, um, I'm thankful for only the two hides and not four because I hate seeing things go to waste and I will bust my butt trying to get things done. And the sad thing is, is that usually my family suffers when I have too much work, um, especially when it's something like a hide because they don't want it to go to waste. Um, so I have a cow hide right now, which I'm going to try and flesh. Um, and then I'll start in the caribous as they were completely frozen. So one at a time. I don't know how heavy it is, but it's certainly not light. It's definitely no moose hide. Um, um, it, uh, I'm lucky. I'm very blessed to have this hide and hopefully I can do the hide justice by doing a good job on it. Um, this will be a very heavy hide and it will probably have to use my husband's help when it comes to um, lifting it, especially when it comes to washing. If you've got, you know, 25 pound hide that is wet, they can be very heavy. And I mean, I've, I've done two sheepskins and when they're wet, it's not, it, it, you almost, I mean, you could use a second person. I don't always have, I never have a second person around, but you could use a second person to lift it out of the water because they're very heavy. Um, once this hide is fleshed, it'll definitely be a lot lighter because um, who knows how much meat or fat is still left on the hide. I always hope for a bit of fat um, because I actually save all that fat and I render it down and I use it for soaps and other things. Um, so, we are here now. I'm going to be here all day. I don't even know how I'm going to do this. Every time I get a hide, I just... I am in way over my head, but... So, I started fleshing the other day, but it was just a little bit too cold for me to flesh. The hide kept freezing. So, I'm gonna be heading into... I'm gonna be heading to a friend's place today to work in their um, garage, and hopefully, 
get this one hide fleshed, and then I can start on the other two hides that I've received. Just some tools of the trade. The gas can is not. Here's lunch to feed us, a hammer, our hide, our fleshing tools. There should be three knives in there. Yeah, there's the third there. And my big beam. And I'm gonna do some laundry and pick up some gas on the way too. So, I've got almost three sides strung up. I've got a few areas like in here, I've got to be able to lift that some more yet. Um, like, yeah. Still got to do down here and the bottom. Um, hopefully I'll get it strung up pretty fast. That light's starting to go, it's starting to get cold. So it's starting to freeze, but not solid enough. There's still a little bit of push, but might be able to frost scrape early in the morning. Um, actually, I have no idea what time it is. It's cold out um, now, probably like minus 15, but I've got my hide all strung up now. Um, it's still got, um, it's got moisture in it um, and it's not completely frozen. Um, once it's frozen, I believe it will be like hard as a rock. Um, um, this section here has already started to freeze. So I tried frost scraping it. Um, and basically what frost scraping does is it kind of like scraping um, the frost off your car. Um, it's taking off um, small layers. Um, and I can already tell that the areas that I've worked on that are like frozen um, scrape off nicely. And the areas that there's still moisture, um, it's more gummy and it's gumming up my tool. But I was just playing around um, and I'll end up with all these little bits that the birds will come and clean up or, and or my dog. Um, she's been sitting here. Um, but yeah, so... So basically for us scraping, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just trying to mimic others that I have seen and pick up um, little tidbits here and there. If you've seen any of my other hide working videos, um, I've probably said a few times that it seems like hide work is a, a never ending search um, and it's something you're consistently learning. I think that even the, the tanners that um, mentor me, um, they're 15, 20, 40 years in and they're still learning. Um, every animal has its technique. Every animal has, um, every environment is different. Um, and there's a lot of nuances, um, but I know with me, when it comes to hide work, just because of how we live and where we live, and right now it's winter, I don't have access to water. So certain tanning methods are out of the, I don't have a hot shop. Um, so certain methods when it comes to hide work are just um, out of the equation for me. So I'm trying to learn what will work best for me um, in my environment with as much minimal external input as possible. So using more of my body and the tools that are surrounded by, as opposed to going out and buying chemicals. Um, I don't have the brains for this animal, so I will be doing um, an egg wash unless I can get pig's brains from a butcher. Um, <laughs> So normally when you're frost scraping, 
You want it to be cold because you want it to be frosty. The temperature has warmed up quite a bit and my hide was sitting in the sun. So it's actually quite soft. Um, so I could actually start um, working on stretching it and softening it, um, but I won't. I've now moved it into the shade and because it's soft, I'm gonna take advantage of that and pull all of my strings tight. So when it wants to freeze, it's gonna get super tight and it should make for a really nice surface to frost scrape. So now that my hide is in the shade, I'm hoping it'll start, I can already tell it's starting to get um, colder, it's starting to freeze up. Um, so I guess I'll have to scrape this all this evening. I think I'm actually making it harder on myself by not working on the hide when it's frozen. made much progress sadly so I'm gonna go in and make dinner and I guess I'll come out when it's dark I think um, I don't know if it's not cutting because this isn't sharp enough I don't know how sharp this tool is supposed to be or if it's because my hide isn't frozen it's still it, it's still a little bit gummy um, so it could be that it's just not cold enough to work in, which I would probably assume that it's that. So it's been a few days, probably almost a week. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's been um, a little over a week since I last frost scraped. I have about a quarter of the hide to do, um, <clears throat> but we had to go away for a hockey tournament. And it got to be a little bit too mild that it was gumming up my tool. I probably do need to sharpen my tool. But today it's um, like minus 15. The wind's pretty cold. Um, but I thought I would show you what I've got left. I'm kind of in tight quarters right now. Um, we had to move the hide. We had it the hide um, over there underneath the trees there. But when the sun came up, it would hit it and it would really warm up the hide. And then it would take forever to freeze at night. So we moved it up against the house, which has like really high snow banks and it's sloped. So it might be interesting for me to try and work back here. Hopefully I can. So here's my hide. And dropped a glove in the snow. As you can see, we tarped it up so that... Whoop, tarped it up so that we didn't have stuff pecking and tearing at it. But I just have this small section to do. And then that's probably it. Then we'll pull it out in the sun. Um, and as the warmer temps come, let it start to soften and I'll start working it and softening it and get it ready for brain tanning. Here I thought I'd be able to just like plow through this little section. But it's amazing how quickly that the muscle memory does come back, but also the muscle pain, how quickly it comes back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the rest of this quarter for this last little bit that I have left to do. And then um, I'm gonna try flipping it by myself, it's really heavy and hard to move. Um, but I would really like to scrape it opposite directions and then possibly from neck to butt. 
Um, but we've got, we don't have a lot of colder days. Um, so we'll see what it lets me do. First, I just got to finish one scrape completely. So, I am officially calling my frost scraping done. Um, yeah, calling it done. So, this would have been the neck, and that would have been the tail end. It's a lot thicker here than it is over there. And then it gets really thin up along the belly. And part of the reason I'm stopping is I actually punch through here. This is like thin like paper. Um, so a lot of this stuff, I will just um, use a pumice stone and like all of this stuff is very soft. Um, so once it starts to warm up, I'm going to start softening this hide um, and working more around the edges and stuff, but yeah, she's done. And I'll show you the back or I guess the hair side. So this will be an absolutely beautiful rug once it's done. Um, the color sadly does not translate but it's like vibrant red. The frost scraping's done. Um, now I will wait for it to, I'm just gonna leave it out. We're gonna tarp it so that the birds don't um, pick at it because I think that one spot that I punched through might've been where like um, little nut hatches or um, chickadees were pecking away at it. Um, and while I was working on it, earlier I actually had a woodpecker come um, and woodpeckers can really do damage um, to a hide so I'm calling it done um, and I will start softening it we're expected like around zero temperatures next week um, and it's amazing how soft a hide gets even when it's still cold to most people but when the Sun comes out and it's zero degrees it's quite malleable and um, easy to work with. Um, I also wanted to say some of the things that I have learned along this journey. I am not a frost scraping expert. I have um, taken tidbits from people who do frost scrape um, and tried to incorporate that. But I think like I've said before, with tanning, it's a lot of just kind of figuring stuff out and taking little bits here and there from people that have mastered the craft um, but just kind of looking at your hide and your elements and and learning from that um, because of where we are and how we live I really want to um, learn how to do this learn how to do hide work in our elements um, and often hunting butts up right against winter and you can have mild weather or it can go cold right away and we don't have lots of freezer space um, especially for hides so learning to do stuff within our seasons and with what we're given um, is something that I really want to learn to do um, with frost scraping I have learned um, that cow hides are not as thick as moose hides I have I never thought they were but um, just from frost scraping this just just seeing what people, um, when they scrape moose hides versus from what I'm scraping, there's a, there's a huge difference. Um, I couldn't imagine what frost scraping a moose would be like. Um, 
but I'm sure it's a lot of physical work and mental and emotional work. Um, I've learned that anything above like 15 ish degrees, so minus 15 Celsius, um, up here in Northwestern Ontario in Canada, minus 15 degrees Celsius, anything above that. So from zero to minus 15 for people who don't know what I'm talking about, anything warmer than minus 15 is almost too warm to work on a hide. In my opinion, I have seen some people work in warmer, um, have frost scraped in, in, in a little bit warmer and I have done it, but today the temperature dropped on us. It went to minus 30 overnight, so it gave the hide a chance to really freeze. And today, scraping was so much easier. Um, and I didn't sharpen my blade. Um, my muscles are a smidge stronger, but I definitely think it had a lot to do with temperature. Um, just when a hide's cold and frozen, I think it just scrapes so much better than when it's not. Um, Another thing that I've learned that it doesn't necessarily pertain to frost scraping, but more when it comes to um, building your hide frame is <laughs> if you haven't measured your hide and you think that a six by eight frame is going to fit your hide, think again, it's probably not. I thought a six by eight frame would fit my cow hide and it didn't. And because of that, there is going to be some of the hide that's just going to be sacrificed because I don't have access to it. Um, so if you think your hide six by eight, maybe go for a 10 by eight frame. All in all for frost scraping, a first time hide, it was, um, it was a very, um, awesome experience, very arduous. My body, the first few days, um, to do this motion, <laughs> to put on a jacket was, uh, almost couldn't do it. Um, so yeah, I guess another thing that I did learn with hide work is to really respect your body, to really respect limits. I learned a lot of, with frost scraping, I learned a lot about boundaries, um, not just in the physical sense, but um, just in the, in, in the broader sense, um, that you have to listen. You have to listen to your body. You have to listen to the low that, that you're presenting it with, and you have to respect it. Um, and yeah. Anyways, it was a it was a great experience. I can't wait to start softening and working this hide even more, and to finish it. Um, so, stay tuned for future videos of it getting softened and getting smoked, and hopefully gracing a floor one day.